Coming up on Wavelength, after a great deal of public input, a board decision on Cummings Creek now appears near. LCRA is taking a major step toward reducing the amount of water used by downstream rice growers, and is this agency about to get into the water treatment business? From the Lower Colorado River Authority, this is Wavelength. Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of Wavelength. The question of whether or not LCRA should mine the lignite we own near Cummings Creek, as you know, is a hot issue. It's hot to the people who live around there, to our wholesale electric customers, and to various groups for or against the project. You've got choices here as to whether you use high sulfur or low sulfur fuel alternatives. Cummings Creek is a known high sulfur alternative you know that there are problems associated with it. Lignite mining can be a benefit to the community. It can be a benefit to the customers of ALCRA. Three major public meetings on the subject have been well attended and feelings on both sides are strong over whether Cummings Creek lignite would be the best and most economic fuel for Fayette 3. The Western coal most pessimistic outlook is still better than the most favorable outlook for the alternative fuels. The board had hoped to make a decision on Cummings Creek by now, but then decided to hold a special meeting at 1 p.m. November the 6th to consider the matter. Does that mean there's something new going on? Now, I think this was a, a compromise in a sense between uh, just delaying the thing indefinitely until everybody that wanted to say something uh, stopped talking, which could take forever, or giving people a reasonable amount of additional time to make their views known to us. And I think the board's leaning over backwards in allowing public input, but making it clear that uh, we do have a, a timetable here that others need to meet. The board did approve LCRA's participation in a study to determine the cost effectiveness of a regional water treatment plant to serve areas of West Travis County. Two of the entities asking LCRA to look at the project are City of Austin water customers, and that brought criticism from Austin city officials accusing LCRA of infringing on their territory. We got asked by the village of Bee Caves and some folks out in the western part of Travis County to help them solve some water problems. And they're not served by the city of Austin, and they're not ever going to be served by the city of Austin. So we began working with those folks. And then there are some municipal utility districts right on the outside of Austin that when they heard about the study and the potential of, of, of maybe a new system being built and an alternative to the city of Austin's service, because they don't like the prices that they're being charged by the city of Austin, then they wanted to get involved in the study. And we said yes. And that naturally got the attention of, of the mayor, and he's sitting there saying, you know, what's the deal here? You guys trying to steal customers away from the city of Austin. Well, we're not trying to do that. And the study on the economics of that water treatment plan should be finished by about April. Now, if there's one thing that LCRA employs here fairly constantly, it's complaints about the low lake levels at Travis and Buchanan in the summertime. Rice growers, as we all know, use a lot of water in the summertime, a whole lot. And this agency has been working very hard to try to cut down the amount of water used by rice growers. So the board, in their last meeting, approved a program that will begin measuring the exact amount of water going to each rice farm. Pat Freeze has that story. It takes billions of gallons of water from the Colorado River to cover the insatiable water appetite of these rice fields each year. In fact, 70% of all the water pumped from the lower Colorado River is used for rice irrigation. 
Up until now, the water has flowed unchecked into the fields and rice farmers have had little incentive to initiate conservation programs. But all that will change soon as LCRA begins installing water measuring boxes on the canals to track exactly how much water is being used by a customer. The boxes will be installed at the Gulf Coast and Lakeside Irrigation Districts over the next two years. The program is aimed at charging customers for water they actually use instead of the current method that charges by the number of acres planted. According to General Manager Dave Freeman, it's an initiative that's long overdue. I think it's probably the most important action that we've taken to conserve water in the history of LCRA. I mean, think of it, uh, about three quarters of all the water that's used out of the river is used for rice farming and we've been delivering it to the farmers and they don't pay on the basis of how much water they get. Uh, they pay on the basis of, of the common cost. It's almost as though you lived in an apartment house and everybody in the apartment building paid the same electric bill no matter how much they used. There's no incentives to conserve or very little. The water measuring program is just one part of an overall effort by LCRA to reduce the amount of water used by the rice industry. Along the canals in the Gulf Coast system, trees and other vegetation are being cleared away to prevent the water from being sucked up before it reaches the field. It's estimated that one tree can consume as much as 450 gallons of water a day and that 20 percent of all the water in the canals is absorbed by the vegetation. LCRA has already cleared more than 80 miles of canals. Well, ultimately, when you add up everything we're doing down there, cleaning out canals and removing vegetation and improving our operations of those systems and, and all the things that the farmers are doing and can do to save water, you know, we're looking at, at an overall reduction on the order of 30 to 40 percent uh, of the water that they say required 10 years ago to grow a certain amount of rice. The effect of the two conservation programs will be felt most in the Highland Lakes, where the savings could mean lake levels one to two feet higher. LCRA's non-point source pollution ordinance requiring that new construction around Lake Travis control 80% of the pollution from rainwater runoff is being finalized by staff. Board approval is set for December. Numerous meetings with interested parties like developers have been held so that this ordinance can be written tough but also realistic. The NPS ordinance appears to have strong public support. The Travis Audubon Society is in strong support for this much needed ordinance and we encourage the LCRA board to act promptly in favor of it without delay. Let's be forward thinking. Let Central Texas take the opportunity to be a leader here. Thank you. One quick question. I live in, in Kingsland. Uh, the way I understand it, you're going to raise it about 14 foot. In Burnett County, blood pressures were rising after the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA, unveiled proposed floodplain levels along Lake Buchanan that would make millions of dollars of property uninsurable against floods. LCRA convinced FEMA to come down for a town meeting and then to review new LCRA data that will push proposed floodplain levels up one to four feet. The 350 people who turned out for the meeting were happier, and FEMA officials praised LCRA for the additional work. Given what I know about um, quasi-government agencies, uh, given what I know about contractors, I said they, I would think they made a heroic effort in getting us turned around. I think they've got the best interest of uh, Burnett County folks at heart and Llano County people. Speaking of considering the public interest, when LCRA's water management plan for the Lower Colorado River was approved last month by the Texas Water Commission, Water Commission Chairman Buck Wynn was so impressed with the broad public input LCRA allowed, he immediately vowed to make that process a requirement for other river authorities in the state. I felt the board uh, benefited greatly from the input that it received in the various public hearings that were conducted throughout the Colorado River Basin. Uh, and that kind of uh, input is really the, the, the foundation of accountability. Uh, accountability to those that the River Authority is supposed to be serving. Uh, so I think it's a very important process and it's one that we will use as a model 
uh, in developing our uh, uh, supervision program for other river authorities under the, uh, the legislation that passed this last session. While our Fayette Power Plant employees have been doing quite a good job, as you may know, FPP set a new winter peak and hummed during that cold winter last year when other utilities were down, then turned in an encore performance this past summer, operating at its highest level of efficiency and availability for any summer ever. This happened a couple of months back, but we thought you might like to see a little of the footage from the Where's the Water campaign that proved to be a large success. Almost 150 LCRA employees put on special t-shirts that were designed by Joe Irvin and cartoonist Ralph Sanchez and headed out to Lake Travis to answer the questions on why lake levels are so low in the summertime. I'm from LCRA and we're just handing out some information on why the lake levels are so low. Auctioneer Renee Bates ups the ante on one of the used vehicles at LCRA's annual equipment auction. There were some 72 items up for bids, which included a couple of rather unusual vehicles. The auction took on the look of an assembly line as drivers waited bumper to bumper to deliver the next car for its turn under the microphone. Jim Henderson says the auction went very well this year and raised over $150,000 for the authority. That's it for this edition of Wavelength. Thanks for being with us. Remember, we're always interested in your story ideas. Let us hear from you. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time.